Hey there! So I've been uploading some live performance videos on this channel, but I'll be doing it a little differently this time around. In this video, I'll first present a short portion of my practicing, then I'll break it down to explain what I'm doing bit by bit. So let me begin. Please watch this 45 seconds clip. If you happen to follow me on Twitter or Instagram, you may have seen it already. It may go pretty fast, but hang in there because I'll walk you through. Hopefully, you will get something out of this video if you are interested in any aspect of electronic music, be it production or performance, or music in general for that matter. Okay, let's go. Greetings, yo. Right about now, I'm trying to perfect this part. Okay, so there was a lot going and those little texts were coming in and out so fast it was hard to follow them, right? Okay, so let's break it down into pieces and play each piece slowly so I can talk over it and describe what I do. Okay, let's just take the first six seconds and watch it normal speed first. Trying to perfect this part. Here, I have the fader for the bass and lead all the way down so I can do the introduction and my voice is audible. And when I'm done talking, I'm pushing up the fader for the bass and then for the lead. When I'm done pushing up the faders, I'm launching the shaker and also pushing up the fader for it a little bit so it's slightly audible. And after that, I'm pulling the lead fader back down to draw attention to the snare. The reason being, I'm adding a delay effect to it and that should be audible. All right, I hope you're still there. Let's take the next chunk, which is seven seconds long and watch it normal speed first. Here's the slow version. First, I'm pushing the lead fader back up and then I'm doing this combined action of using the cross fader to mute both the bass and the snare while also pushing up the fader for the percussion. The purpose of which of course is to draw attention to the percussion. And here, I'm sort of undoing my previous action by moving the crossfader back to the left while also switching the percussion clip to a softer sounding one so that it's not that much in the focus anymore. Hey, are you there? Okay, let's take the next chunk, which is actually chunky. That is 10 seconds long and watch it normal speed first. Alright, the slow version. First, I'm pushing up the fader for the shaker so the beat is in full swing somewhat. After that, I'm muting the guitar to draw attention to the kick. And on the kick part, I'm launching a clip that does the feel, which sounds like dun 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 dun. Instead of the normal dun 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 dun. Okay, so the kick fill only lasts briefly and I'm switching back to the normal kick. But then I'm launching the kick fill for the second time while also launching the pad with my other hand. And after that, I'm launching a snare roll which sounds da 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 da. And I'm also decreasing the delay effect that I was previously using on the snare part. The reason for that is because the snare roll is already busy sounding and if you apply a delay effect to it, it's gonna sound a little chaotic. All right, the last chunk, which is 18 seconds long. Let's watch it normal speed. First, I'm pulling the snare fader down so the snare is no longer audible. And I'm also switching the kick clip from a normal sounding one to a lighter sounding one. So basically, I'm doing a little decrescendo here to make the whole music sound a little softer here. And the purpose of the decrescendo was to prepare for the upcoming new section. 
So in Ableton's session view, you have tracks laid out vertically, such as the kick track, snare track, hi-hat track, etc. And the scenes laid out horizontally. And when you have sections in your composition, you typically use these scenes to move from one section to another. So here, I was basically playing the first section of my composition by using the top two rows, meaning the combination of the first and second scenes. And then, in order to move to the new section, I'm launching the third scene by pressing the button on the right. So when you press any of those buttons on the right, you launch a new scene, which means to launch all the clips on the same row. But here, I'm also launching the electric piano clip just above the one that's supposed to be played, right? This is because I preferred that one on this particular occasion. Then I'm pushing the snare fader back up so the snare roll gets audible again. Then I'm launching the brushy synth clip. And what I'm doing here with my left hand is to prepare to use an effect on that brushy synth. And the effect that I'm using is the beat repeat effect. So the brushy synth on its own is like wow, right? But by using that beat repeat, it now sounds like wow, wow, wow. Then finally, I press that button that stops all the clips. So what do you say? Can we watch the whole 45 seconds in one go at normal speed? And that will be the end of the video. This is just a short portion of the four to five minutes long live performance I'm trying to develop and practice. And when I'm done with this one, I will do the same and prepare the live versions of my other releases. And hopefully sometime in the near future, I will start gigging somewhere. Can't wait to see you in person. So thanks for your support. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Greetings, yo! Right about now, I'm trying to perfect this part.